Good evening, people of God, and once again, this is Tony Dyson with another edition of Time Out with Tony Dyson. On last week, I did, Do You Really Know Who You Are? And as I asked God what I was going to do this week, he told me I was not finished with last week. So this is an extension of last week. We're going to go back to Psalms 82 and 6, where it states, I have said, ye are gods, ye are children of the Most High. Now, if you take that word children, you get child. Now, a child is a little one who normally cannot fend for themselves. So that's why the child has parents. And the parents are responsible to make sure that the child eats, make sure the child has decent clothes, and for a roof over the child's head. The child is a reflection, a direct reflection on how well the parent keeps them. See, if you send a child to school um, ungroomed and filthy and nasty and old clothes, run-down clothes, the school is not going to talk about the child. They're going to actually talk about the parent. Now, the kids may talk about the child, but that's a different story. But everyone is going to talk about the parent. So, therefore, if God is our father and we claim that he can do all things, you know, we quote the scripture, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. Well, then, why are we walking around mad, sad, complaining? That is not a reflection of God's power. Now, don't get me wrong. I do understand that we go through things, but we have dominion over those things. But also, the parent rewards the child for good deeds. So, therefore, if we follow God's principles, his teachings, follow after him, we tend to receive more things. Now, not saying there's not any trials and tribulations involved there, but we tend to Receive a little bit more. See, because if a child disobeys and is unruly and, as we call, hard-headed, the parent is still the parent. And they still must supply the child with the bare necessities. Food, clothes, and a roof over their head. I hope someone tied that together. See, if God is our Father, when we follow His teachings... And what he says to do. See a lot of times we can show a little bit more. But when we do the bare minimum. Just to try to please God. <laughs> he does just enough. For us. So if God is our father. Then we are kings. We are gods. We are lords. For he has called us so. So we must reflect that same thing who wants to be part of a sad kingdom no one who wants to be part of a sick kingdom no one more or less who wants to be part of a broke kingdom no one so therefore not saying that we have to go out and buy flashy cars and flashy homes people of God but we have to Show the world what God can and will do for us by us being in his kingdom. But see, the thing is, when God made us landlords over the earth, we're supposed to take care of this. So that means when things go wrong in the world, the world is supposed to come to the church because we are the landlords. I went through that last week. But. The world is saying the church is so messed up. Why do we need to come to you all to fix something when you all can't even fix things yourself, amongst yourself? But moving on, once you find that area that you excel in, then you subdue that. If we take Michael Jordan, for instance. Michael Jordan, greatest basketball player, arguably, (laughs) of all times. You remember he went to baseball for a couple of years. And I guess he did okay. He came back to basketball because that was his domain. That's what he ruled in. See, when Adam and Eve sinned, you know, Genesis uh, 2.19, God formed the animals and Adam named them. And Adam had dominion. 
In Genesis 126, it's stated, God said, have control, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle, over all creeping things. And if you're interested more in that, I suggest that you read further. But Adam had control over all these things. He had dominion. He had authority. But when Adam sinned and they were cast out, he lost it. So, if, so once he lost dominion of the earth, he lost dominion over everything that was in the earth. I hope somebody get that, but read along in Genesis and you'll find out what's going on. But see, now when Abel was born, Abel realized what was going on. Abel realized that they were supposed to be running the show. So what did Abel do? Abel, when it took control of the sheep, if you look, it says he was a keeper of the sheep. He took control. Now, if the animals had rebelled against Adam once he sinned, if he lost his dominion, the animals became unruly. So how was Abel able to keep the sheep? He took control. He grabbed the sheep. I'm, I'm just saying in layman's terms. <laughs> grabbed the sheep. I'm your master. You must and you will obey me. So Abel was taking back what his father lost, which was dominion. Now, I know I have some major questions coming, and I'm ready to answer them. But what I'm saying today, people of God, we have to take our dominion back. We have to take our lordship back. We have to take back control over the earth. And the scripture is clearly states that heaven and the heavens belong to God. The earth have he given to the children of man. So that's saying right now. That this earth is ours. And for us to let the world keep running it. Because we can't get our business intact. We need to study further. What thus saith the Lord. Break down these walls. Of uh, segregation. Of uh, denominations. If we all believe in the same God. The same Christ. The same Holy Spirit. We all believe that Christ rose from the dead. We all read from the same Bible. What's going on? The Bible states until all the saints come to God. All. Until the gospel is spread through all nations. People of God, on this day, I'm urging you to find out what your dominion is. Grab it. Take hold. Subdue your life. That's what God wants us to do. We are a reflection of him. And he is our father. So if he's our father, we're supposed to be well taken care of. We're supposed to be able to overcome. You know, faith, as small as a mustard seed. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Faith without works is dead. Until the next time, I hope you all send some questions some emails or whatnot, you can reach me at A-N-T-D-Y-S-O-N-2007 at yahoo.com. Until the next time we meet, God bless you and God keep you.